Cloud seeding is a form of weather modification aimed at increasing rainfall or snow in a given area. Particles are dispersed into the clouds in order to increase precipitation. There are two types of cloud seeding known as warm and winter. Warm cloud seeding is conducted by dispersing flares containing calcium chloride. These particles attract water vapor forming new water droplets. Common salt may also be used if processed to powder form and is generally distributed by aircraft. Wintertime cloud seeding uses silver iodide, which is then collected by clouds containing supercooled water droplets. The silver iodide then turns into ice crystals before becoming large snowflakes as it falls to the floor, increasing the snowpack. Cloud seeding operations have generally been conducted in the wintertime as it has yielded better results. As water isn't exactly plentiful in an arid state, scientists turn to cloud seeding research to increase our water supply. Organizations such as the Desert Research Institute have been conducting operations since 1960s. The Desert Research Institute is located next to the Truckee Meadows Community College. The DRI has conducted research applying to air, land and life, and water. Its cloud TV programs have operated in the mountainous regions of Nevada, California, and Colorado. The objective of the DRI's cloud seeding program is to increase snowfall, which would result in more spring runoff, increasing our water supply. Cloud seeding has allowed the DRI to protect our water quality and our resources. The DRI has been controlling the weather for over 50 years. The DRI has directed cloud seeding operations in several areas, including Lake Tahoe, the Truckee River, the Carson River, the Walker River, and the Reese River. Augmenting the snowfall has provided more runoff from specific basins. The criteria for operations have solely depended on the weather conditions. The amount of clouds must cover at least 50% of the targeted area. Clouds must have sufficient depth for the space reaching the mountaintops for proper seeding. The wind must blow in a direction that allows the particles to reach the targeted area. The direction needed for proper seeding varies by region. Wind speeds at 10,000 feet must not surpass 60 knots in order to ensure the growth of ice crystals. Lake Tahoe and the Ruby Mountains have experienced cloud seeding since the 1960s. The project at Ruby Mountains started in 1981 using surplus generators. Since Tahoe does not contain a sufficient amount of clouds during the summer, wintertime has always been ideal for seeding. Ground-based generators use propane flame to vaporize the silver iodide. The seeding solution then crystallizes in the cold air, serving as ice nuclei. The generators are positioned in a way that allows more silver iodide to reach the clouds. Seeding aircrafts are used to augment ground seeding operations. The flares attached to the plane contain a silver iodide solution, which is either fixed in place while the solution is burned or dropped into a cloud region. Cloud seeding is believed to be successful at times, but it does have its limitations. Clouds at specific stages are not susceptible to seeding, thus making it ineffective. It is even believed that cloud seeding might even cause rain suppression. Benefits vary depending on the weather conditions. Research done by the DRI has suggested the precipitation rate has increased by about 2 mm per hour. The DRI have estimated that an additional 64,000 acres of water have been a result of seeding for the past 15 years. 
Some believe that cloud shading steals rainfall from someone else. Specifically, won't Eli be robbed of rain because of seeding? That doesn't seem to be the case, as water vapor is always present in the atmosphere. Several studies have also suggested that areas downwind of seeding sites have experienced increased precipitation. While the amount of silver iodide dispersed from generators isn't enough to be considered poisonous, it can be if accumulated over time. Exposure to silver iodide can cause argyria, which turns the skin into a blue or black discoloration. It is difficult to prove the obvious effects of cloud seeding, because how would we know how much rainfall we would have gotten without seeding? Since the 1980s, U.S.-sponsored research on weather modification has been minimal at least, failing to confirm the effectiveness of cloud seeding. In the end, cloud seeding will continue to be if we believe it is beneficial to us. The question might not be, is seeding harmful? Instead, how harmful? More research needs to be conducted in order to understand the ramifications of cloud seeding and its possible side effects.